Hello and welcome back to my channel, Snips by Kelly. I'm Kelly and today I'm back with some scrapbooking with Cricut tips. Be sure to hit that like and subscribe button as well as the notifications if you don't want to miss any future tips on how to do more scrapbooking with your Cricut. So one of my favorite things to do is to use the slice tool and any way you slice it, it comes up cute. So I'm going to show you three different quick projects today that illustrate how you can use the slice tool to be able to create unique images for your scrapbooks in just minutes and especially those images that you will be able to use to back pattern papers and to be able to highlight pattern papers and really make adorable images that are unique from other images. So I've gone into the Cricut images and I have grabbed this cute rubber boot and this is just adorable the way it is. You could back the entire boot with pattern paper if you wanted but how adorable if there were hearts or little umbrellas or flowers or really cute designs that you could add to that boot and then back that boot with pattern papers that really highlighted a collection and would draw out the colors. So now I'm going to go in and just grab a generic flower. I'm just going to happen to use a flower for the example and this flower has a center in it. So what I'm going to to do is I'm going to just ungroup that flower and I'm going to take that back of that flower out by deleting that image and then there is a contour button on the right. The contour button allows you to shut off or turn on certain sections of an image. So I actually just clicked off that flower center so it's a solid flower. I'm going to make that flower a little less than an inch so that if I cut some pattern papers one inch by one inch, I would easily be able to back the boot. So what I'm going to do now is arrange those flowers in spots on the boot that I think would be cute and just in random spots just like you would have a patterned boot or a patterned shirt or a patterned pair of leggings and I'm going to arrange them. Now when you use the slice tool you aren't unfortunately able to slice all of these images at once. You typically have to slice um, one image at a time because it will allow you to select two images and hit slice. However, I want to have all of my images arranged and then I'm going to actually close the eye on those images one at a time so that they're exactly where I want to slice them and it will make the slicing process easier. So what I'm doing is I have them arranged the way that I want and I'm clicking on each one of them, hitting the little eyeball which shuts the image off even though the image is still there it just makes it not visible um, and so we're going to close the eye on all of those flowers except one then we're going to select the flower and the whole boot we're going to go over to the slice button hit slice and often it takes just a second you'll sort of see a little glitch in the screen and then you can see that it is sliced out the original image and it's sliced out part of the white of the boot. Now when I go to the next flower and I hit the eyeball and I turn it back on, then I can see the next flower in the series. Now I might have to arrange my boot to the back so that we can see the flower because the flower got buried under the boot. Now I'm going to select both of those images, go down to the slice button, hit slice, wait a second, and then remove those images that I've just sliced out of the boot. And sometimes there'll be about, you know, several images, it depends on. I wanted to be able to put that flower on the edge because it's going to be covered by the frame. So you don't have to worry if there's a little section that is cut completely out, the frame is going to cover it. Now we're going to do the same thing with the next flower, select both images, hit slice, and then remove that and we're just going to complete this 
um, process until we have several of those flowers sliced out of the boot. And you can just envision, like my example that you saw at the beginning of this video, backing those little flower pieces with lots of little patterns that just make it adorable. So you can think of lots of things that you could do this with. I mean, there are it's all kinds of images that would be really, really cute with a pattern behind them. An umbrella, a t-shirt, um, so many things that just add a unique twist. Anybody can go in and grab the boot and use the boot on their page, but you can make it really cute and unique according to the um, the photos that you have, the theme that you have, the story that you have, or the journaling that you have around a photo. Perhaps you have a photo um, of a grandchild or something that has a specific pattern on their boot. For example, I have one granddaughter who has little um, rubber boots that have little tiny rainbows on them. So I could come in with a little rainbow and put a rainbow pattern all over on these boots and then I could um, back those with pattern papers and it would just be darling. All right, we are getting really, really close. I think we have maybe one more flower or two more flowers to cut out of there but it's kind of nice for you to be able to watch me do this simple slicing over and over again I always assume in my paper crafting that everyone knows how to use the slice tool but if you haven't had an opportunity to do it um, you may not know about it and I use my slice tool literally daily I slice things out so that I can back things I slice things so that I can uh, piece two pieces together. There are all kinds of reasons to use the slice tool and it's just a very, very easy tool to use. It looks like I have one flower left. So again, I'm arranging that flower to the front, selecting both images, hitting that slice button. And then now I will have all of those flowers sliced out of the boot. Of course, you can go smaller or larger. You can make more images than what I've made. I'm just doing a quick version so that you can see how to do it. Now you can see when I put this cute frame over the top and arrange it to the front by hitting arrange, arrange to the front, you can see how cute that will be. Now you can back that boot with all kinds of cute pattern papers and just make um, the most adorable piece like uh, you see here for your scrapbooking pages and that happened to be from my Blossom workshop. Now now you might have noticed in my Blossom workshop that that boot had some other pattern paper pieces. Now even though this video is about slicing, I really quickly want to show you how I duplicated that boot hit the contour button on the second boot and the contour allows you to open or close certain elements within an image. So I'm going to go through and I'm going to shut off or close or make invisible all of the pieces of the boot except for that bottom, the rubber bottom. And now you can see that I could cut that rubber bottom, those rubber bottom bits out of solid cardstock or out of another pattern and it's getting so adorable. How easy is that? I hope you'll try that. Now let's take a look at project number two. Project number two is going to be a mason jar project. And we're going to go into our images and pull a mason jar into um, into the canvas and this is a really cute little mason jar that's one of our close off of our close to my heart collections and um, you, I don't need that top little doily part, so I'm just going to remove that. But I would, I love to take images and make them into shakers or make them into things that you could put adorable background paper on. So what I want to do is I want to 
cut out the center of this mason jar and for the particular project that I used it for, I made it into a shaker so I could add shaker elements behind it. But you could very easily cut a shape out of it and then add pattern paper out of it. So again, because this video is about slicing, um, you could actually just take a regular square and you could tight, uh, um, slice a regular square out of that mason jar, but I really wanted it to look like the shaker was built into the mason jar and I wanted the shaker element to have the same shape as the shaker jar. So when you take a shape, which such as a square, it can be any shape, but such as this square, and you put it over another image and you select both of those images and you hit slice, it will slice that image just like you're taking a ruler over that image. The part of the image that is covered by the other image is the part that will get sliced. So you can see here that I made that square go right to the base of the mason jar so that it would cut the bottom half of the mason jar out. Now I'm making that interior piece of the mason jar super small, small enough so that I could add foam tape around the edge of the outer portion. And I'm centering that in there and I'm going to slice that out, that interior mason jar out of the exterior mason jar to create that shaker element. Now I've left a wide enough area around the outside of the mason jar so that I could fit a 3D foam tape around the edge, put some acetate window in there, and make it into a cute shaker. You could also skip the shaker window and you could just add pattern paper on that mason jar and make it super adorable. Now I love doing this. You can make any image into a shaker by cutting out the interior of that image and you can get creative with the slice tool and you can um, actually um, experiment uh, with what types of images you want to slice out. Now I've actually just duplicated that and I showed you the contour tool again how you can put that piece back in so that you have the back of the mason jar. Now we have the front that can fit the foam tape in the acetate window and the back as well. So you can see here how I used that in this mason jar project. Next for the third project, I'm going to show you how I created some unique Christmas trees. So there are all kinds of trees that you can go and grab um, in your um, Cricut. You know, there's there's probably millions. I don't even know how many there are. But I love to create unique patterns on trees and again, back them with pattern paper and make them so cute and so unique. So by taking a triangle, unlocking the triangle, and changing the shape of that triangle, I am able to create a tree, and then I'm going to grab a square, unlock that square, and make it into a skinnier rectangle. Then I'm going to select the whole thing, and I'm going to hit Combine the combine menu and weld. All I'm doing here is creating um, the trunk of the tree. So you could do this on a regular triangle without a trunk, but I really liked the look of this on my Holly Jolly workshop where I created four or five different trees out of triangles and cut different patterns out of each tree and then backed them. But I'm gonna show you really quickly an example because you could literally cut anything out of this tree that you wanted to. I'm showing you how I'm going to select both of these images, a star, and I'm going to cut a star out of the tree. You could go and grab a circle and cut a circle out of the tree. You could cut dots and stars and pluses and triangles and any type of shape out of those trees that you would like. You could cut zigzags. You could cut anything that you want out of that tree 
to make it look more unique. Each of these images are cute by themselves, the boot, the jar, the tree, but you're giving it that one extra step of making it a little bit more unique for your pages by adding a different pattern to it. And then you can back those patterns with coordinating cardstock or pattern paper. And it just adds just such a unique and interesting element that maybe other pages don't have. So now I removed those because I just showed you those examples, but I'm going to make a unique shape and I'm going to go back and forth across this image, slicing this unique shape out to make an interesting tree. And you'll be able to see that tree. You saw the tree in my example, but I'm just going to show you kind of how I did that. So basically, I took a rectangle and another rectangle and I'm going to cover a portion of that rectangle on an angle and remember when I told you when you cover one shape with another shape and you hit the slice after selecting them it will slice those two images out of each other so I'm going to hit slice and you can see the magic where it slices that image. Now I really just want that bottom image. Um, so I'm gonna kind of pull away all the junk and I can delete most of the junk here cause I don't need that. And I've created this wedge kind of. And I want to be able to cr create this wedge on the bottom of the tree and create the wedge going one way, flip it over and create the wedge going the other way and back and forth so that I can slice those images out. So I actually slice that wedge out of there. And now, or I'm going to slice that wedge out of there. And then now I want to actually flip the wedge and I want to flip it both horizontally and vertically so that it toggles the opposite direction on the tree. So I'm going to go up to that menu and I'm going to choose flip and I'm going to flip it horizontally and I'm going to flip it vertically because you can see how I need it to go the other direction. So I'm going to flip that and then now it's going to fit perfectly. I'm going to make it a little smaller so that it fits right on top of my other cut, my other slice. Then I can select the whole thing. So I might have to play with it just a little bit to get it the right shape. And I don't care that these pieces are symmetrical because I'm just making an interesting pattern in the back of the tree. So once I kind of get it the way I want it on there, then I slice it out get the junk out of there. I can kind of delete that junk because I don't need it. Then I'm going to come back in again with the first shape, but I'm going to make it smaller and then I'm going to unlock it and make it a little wider. So I'm going to make it skinnier and wider. So it just keeps kind of going up the tree and it keeps getting a little bit skinnier and a little bit wider and a little bit skinnier. So it creates this cute design all the way up the tree. I'm going to want to leave a little bit of space at the top of the tree because I'll probably decorate the top of the tree with a star and it also will be enough slicing to give you a really good idea of how to do this on your own so there's no reason for me to go all the way up when you've seen me do this. So again I'm going the opposite direction with the next one making it a little smaller and a little bit wider and then I'm going to slice that one out and then I have those cute, cute designs out of the tree. I could keep going up higher, um, but you get the idea. Uh, maybe I do go up one more. Let's see, I do go up one more. So I'm gonna make one more higher and make it a little um, wider and a little skinnier. Uh, skinnier and taller and then and really when you hit the unlock tool with your mouse you can just make it wider and skinnier and stretch it and do whatever you need to do with it and then I'm going to slice that out and I'm going to call it good on that because I'm going to add a star to the top and then I'm going to show you again how we can use the contour tool and make that background now you don't have to use the contour tool you could have just duplicated that tree before we sliced out of it and then you would have the back and then the front the front would be the sliced out tree and then the back would be the solid 
solid tree, but I kind of like showing you the contour tool anyway, because the contour tool is so great for closing bits of images when you want the whole image, but maybe you don't want whatever's cut out of it. It's such a wonderful way. So now I'm just clicking on each of those slices and then I'm left with the solid. So I can change the color on the solid. I can make the solid a pattern. So you could back those pieces that we just sliced out just by, you know, cutting a little chunk of paper and then trimming around it. Or you could actually cut uh, on your Cricut the pattern or cardstock. So you can see how I have uh, created cute patterns by slicing out chevrons, odd shapes, and a full triangle and back those with cute, cute pattern papers. I hope Hope you like these tips today shoot me a comment and let me know if it was helpful and any other tips that you might like to know when it comes to scrapbooking with your Cricut thank you so much for watching be sure to hit like subscribe and the notifications bell and share with your friends bye bye